What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. So I very recently uploaded a video talking about how to download the brand new official Windows 11 ISO. This video will apply basically all into the future. If you'd like to download the Windows 11 Insider ISO, check the description down below for a guide showing the official method. When you're done with it, you'll end up with a five or so gigabyte Windows 11 ISO. In this video, I'll be showing you how to convert this ISO into a virtual machine using Hyper-V. It's free and builds into Windows as long as you enable the feature. If you'd like to know how to do that, check the description down below where I'll hopefully have a video showing you exactly that. Anyway, opening up Hyper-V, I've got my ISO downloaded and put in a separate folder. Here is my ISO. So let's go ahead and start. To begin, let's make a brand new virtual machine in Hyper-V. Simply click new on the right hand side, followed by virtual machine. When you see this window, click next and give your virtual machine a name. I'll call it Win 11 ISO test. As I currently have a Windows 11 machine, you had to basically install Windows 10, then upgrade to Windows 11. Now you can skip that and install Windows 11 directly. Anyways, if you'd like to store the virtual machine files in a specific location, now is when you do it here. You take it and you choose a brand new place. So I've gone ahead and created a new folder on one of my SSDs and here it is. I'll click next and I'll choose a generation here. Generation 2 is fine as it's only 64-bit and Windows 11 is only 64-bit. Next, now we can choose some startup memory. You're going to have to make sure that you have enough free RAM in your computer. I have 128 gigs, so that is no issue. Open up Task Manager with Control shift escape head across to Performance followed by Memory and check how much available free RAM you have. Out of 128 gigs, I'm currently using around 68, meaning 72 is available. Of that 72, I still want to leave a lot for my current computer and only use a couple for the virtual machine. You, of course, may have 8, 16 gigs of RAM, etc. So just make sure you take from the available pool of RAM and don't take the entire thing as you still do need to use your computer. So, because I don't really need to worry about it, I'm more than free to go ahead and enter in a multiple of 1024 megabytes. So, I'll give it, say, 16 gigs. 1024 times 16 is 16384. Keeping to the 1024 is not necessarily required, though it's just something I like to do. We can choose if we like to keep this as a set number, or we can leave it as dynamic memory that should grow as the virtual machine is running, though this feature doesn't always seem to work the best for some reason. Anyway, I'll leave it as is, click next and choose an internet connection. For this, I'll choose default switch. You won't really need to pick anything else unless you know what you're doing there. I'll click next once again, and now we get to choose where we want the virtual hard drive to be. I'll leave it where it is currently in this folder here that's automatically put inside of the previous folder where our virtual machine is stored. In fact, I'll move it up one directory. Anyway, not necessarily important. This just lets you customize where the drive itself will be stored. I'll click next, and choose install an operating system from a bootable image file. Click browse and navigate across into the folder where you have the Windows 11 ISO. Select it, click open, and then click next here. Now you'll see some more info, click finish, and you'll see your Windows 11 virtual machine now appears on the list. We can right click, click settings, and we can get to customizing some options here. So a couple of things I'd recommend. Go to the memory tab and change the minimum RAM to the minimum amount of RAM you'd like to give the virtual machine. In my case, I usually give the entire 16 gigs here, so you can set this to whatever you'd like. Click apply and head across to the processor tab. In here, you can give it as many processors as you currently have available. I have a Ryzen 3900X, so once again, pulling across my task manager, 12 cores, 24 threads. Let's give it, say, six virtual processors, which should use up around six cores. I'll click apply, and now we can continue customizing. If you'd like to edit the hard disk, you can do so here, the DVD drive here, the network adapter here, and of course we have security, firmware, the ability to add hardware, as well as the couple of things down here. We can disable checkpoints if you'd like to not have checkpoints, though of course it won't really use up extra space unless you actually use this feature. We have smart paging, and a couple of other options. Anyway, we're done here. I'll click OK, double click on my virtual machine and a new window will open up. Now we can start our virtual machine with the start button. Upon doing so, it'll boot up, press any key to boot from CD or DVD, and there we go. Now it's booting from the Windows 11 ISO as if it was a actual CD. So I'll choose a language, next, install. And of course, from here on out, it's the normal Windows 11 or Windows installation. Enter a product key or click I don't have one if you'd like a trial just to test it out. 
choose a version here. I'll choose Windows 11 Pro. Next, agree after reading. Next, choose upgrade or custom. Of course, we'll be choosing custom. Select the drive you'd like to install it on. Of course, there's only one and then click next. Now it'll run through the entire installation. And before you know it, it'll actually be done. You'll be dropped right into the actual OS itself. Of course, after getting through the annoying configuration section, which we'll see in just a moment. And there we go. We now start the installation process. So choose a region. Fortunately, you can't type here, so I'll be scrolling. I think it defaulted back to US, whatever. US, no second keyboard, give your PC a name. I'll call it, say, troubleshoot. I'll choose setup for personal use next. And of course, you can enter a Microsoft account here. I, for one, will be skipping. Ooh, I don't think that's something you can do. Can I go next? No, I guess you need to sign in with a Microsoft account, assuming you have internet. Maybe you could do something disabling the internet connection before installing Windows. Not too sure. Sign in options, maybe. Aha, offline account. There we go. I'll choose skip for now. Don't want to sign in with Microsoft. Enter a name. Call it, say, Techno. Enter a password. I'll leave this blank. And I'll go ahead and turn off all of the usual tracking, telemetry, and information collecting as usual. And now, if you have a working internet connection, it'll go ahead and download Windows updates. So, of course, this is going to be the most time-consuming part of this process, assuming the ISO isn't exactly completely up-to-date. And there we have it. Now we're booted into Windows, we can choose a resolution here, which I'll leave for now. And, of course, it's working as you'd expect. You can shut it down here, or shut it down through the start bar when you're eventually done using it. It's really just another virtual machine. When you're eventually done with it, you can right-click it and click delete, and of course, just continue using it as is. You now have a Windows 11 virtual machine built using the official Windows 11 ISO. It really is that simple. But anyways, my name's been taken over here for Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.